Hey guys, welcome to this week's Elite Entrepreneurs Podcast by Alistair Cunningham. Today I am joined by the one and only Kevin. And Kevin has been a very successful businessman for the last 20 years. He's got one of the very best building firms up north. He's a very successful property investor. And today he's going to be sharing some of his tips on how to calculate reverbs, how to get success, how to grow a business, and honestly, just how to live life. Let's go meet Kevin. Hey guys, welcome to the Elite Entrepreneurs Podcast. Uh, my name is Alistair Cunningham, and this is the one and only Kevin from HBD Building Company up north. Kevin, hey man. Hi, how are you doing? I'm really good. Thank you for uh, for coming on board. Thank you for um, for being here. Um, I've been, you know, I've been interested to get you on the podcast since I started it. I've always wanted you on the podcast because we're of a similar age. We've had very similar backgrounds to the fact we both come from sort of tradesmen type. Uh, type businesses, um, and it's just interesting being with somebody who's so real. You're right. I love, I love real, honest people. That's what I love. I love it, and, I, and it shines through with you. And um, really, I wanted to get you on to talk about what you've been up to, where it all started, a bit about your background, just everything, really, just to get a. Get a like a this is your life. Do you remember that program? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Shows how old we are, don't it? It actually does. Yeah. So today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get you on, and I wanted to have a this is your life uh, of Kevin Woods. So uh, where did it start, man? Come on, talk to me. Well, where did it start? Um, so I've been working yeah. for since I was four, for probably 13, 14, mill ground. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Started out young. I always, I always wanted to work and earn. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hustler. Hustler, yeah. yeah. Hustler mentality. Yeah, yeah. Always had the hustler mentality. And I've been in and out of jobs, in and out of businesses. Yeah. You know, just just trying to earn a living. Yeah, yeah just um, trying to make since, bread. Yeah, yeah. Since, since I was a kid. Um, I didn't do any very. I didn't do anything at school. Didn't do. Didn't do much. Didn't go. Do you know something? Didn't I, do anything. I, I always find it quite interesting. Some of the most successful people in the world flunked out of school yeah. and they, they, they hated school, they just didn't get on because their brains think way quicker than, than what the education system Yeah, absolutely, you. massively. Yeah, and I didn't do anything. Um, I didn't actually go for my exams. Oh, did you? No, I went, to, I went to the park and got drunk instead. Went to the park and got drunk yeah, instead, that's, pretty much. Uh, that's funny. It, were, um, I, it didn't interest me. Yeah. I, I, to be fair, that you know, first school, middle school, brilliant, all good fun. Grammar school, all boys school, all about egos. Oh, yeah. Let's have a scrap. Let's see who the you know big yeah, man is. Yeah, yeah. And it want it want education. Uh, I'm not a sporty person. They were a sports school. Oh, okay, fine. So they didn't give a shit. To be fair. Yeah. About so I want interest. I wanted to get out, get a job. Yeah. Just go out and enjoy life. So um, what was? Do you remember the first? I know you said you were doing the milk rounds and yeah. things. Like, was that on these little electric carts? Or? No, no. We had a like an old pickup Bedford truck. Oh, you'd you'd progressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny because my next door neighbour, uh, he was a, he done a milk round uh, to make a little bit extra money, and he had a Ford Transit flatbed, yeah. and um, he lost all the milk because he, he just he was an idiot driver, <laughs> and he kept he kept coming back. He got sacked after the first week because he lost crates of milk off the back multiple times throughout them weeks. Um, it was always funny. I was, and I, I'm like, you're that dumb, you can't even run a milk <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah. wow, yeah. what a chance have you got? Um, anyway, it's funny. So, they were your sort of early days to yeah. generate a little bit of pocket money, a bit, bit of small, because I can't imagine it's big money, but like small cash and sidelines. You left school, what was the, when was it you sort of hit your first sort of real sort of, aha, uh-huh, business idea? When was that? Um, so I, I got um, a job in a car wash. Okay. It was literally two pound fifty an hour. Yeah. It was to cycle for about an hour there, an hour back on a night, right. and it was just just to work. Yeah. Because you know, no education. Mm. People didn't really you know, a sixteen, seventeen year old kid, unless you were bumming it around in a warehouse or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Which is all fine. But I was always interested in cars. All right. Okay. So the only way I could get in as an early age washing cars, car valet. Yeah. So I. I um, Got a job in a car wash, and I was there for about three or four months, and I thought, oh, time to make some money out of this now. And I went down the Prince's Trust route. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I went down the Prince's Trust route. Um, and they were running some courses in a local area. Right. So what you went in, you did a business plan, and eventually you got in front of a panel of people yeah. and presented your business plan. And um, awesome. and then if you were 
any good. They awarded you. Uh, what was the opinion. business plan? So it was, it was car valeting. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, well, if I'm doing it, Maybe why not make some money? Make out some real money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went on the course, and I actually won an award. And this is what I've been about 16, 17 year old, maybe a little bit. Yeah, about that sort of age. Okay. And I won an award for the best business plan. That's so amazing. Yeah. And and a 16, little, 17 year old. Yeah, little princes. Little. It were it were an honour for them because I wasn't really educated. I'm not. Yeah. You know, um, academic like that, so I was like, oh, yeah, pat on the back type yeah, of thing, yeah, yeah. and they give me three thousand quid. Oh, I was awesome. awarded three thousand quid, and um, so I went out, bought all the gear, mm. um, little car, and the guy that I worked for at the time split with his business partner and set up another company. Car, he had car sales, oh, okay. So we did the cleaning for the car sales, and he had a car wash, and. Um, he said, will you come and do my cars? Yeah. I'll pay you going rate, whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So I did that. Did odd car on a weekend yeah. and did most of his cars and stuff like that. And it was my first taste of business. And because I was young and dumb and stupid, yeah. I spent everything that came in. Yeah. And eventually he offered me a job. Right. So I was like, well, yeah, I need a job. Yeah. I had no money. <laughs> so I, it was like, that's the first business failure in the fact and you learn I've always learned from failure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Always. Absolutely. And it, I want a failure because I had a job and I still had income and I yeah. still had all my, my gear, but it didn't go to plan. Yeah, yeah, well that's that's what happened. And happens. it was like, I need to sort this out. I can't keep doing this. Fast forward a few more years and I did. I was in and out of businesses, yeah. in and out of trouble. So by the time you were like so you're now 16, 17. By the time you're like 20, 22, how many businesses have you been involved or started? How many two. side hustles? Two businesses? Two, yeah, two. It's very similar to me. Yeah. So similar because I, I say, my, I didn't really do much at school. I hated school. But I did uh, go to college to learn how to be a, a bus and coach mechanic. And uh, I was doing one day at college, four days in the workshop. Um, and I was always hustling, right? I met somebody who used to go back and forth to Thailand and he used to bring back like a load of like moody football shirts oh, and, wow. and moody uh, Tiffany yeah, jewelry yeah, and things yeah. like that, right? And I used to buy, I used to put all my, give him all my wages literally every week and he'd give me all this, this stuff and I used to fill my car with it. I did exactly the same. And flog it all to my mates. I used to do exactly like, the same thing. I went to Manchester, Cheetah Mill. Oh, right. <laughs> so if, you, if you're from the north, you know everybody knows Cheetah Mill. It's the way you buy all the fake clothes. Oh, is it? Fine, okay. And I used to go with a, I started out with a little van, went and bought some. Yeah. Go around the pubs, <laughs> selling them and what have you. Standard and I ended pops. up going once a week with a Sprinter van. Really? Filling it to order. Oh, taking wow. It, and I ended up with, with one or two customers. They used to buy a lot. Really? So it can become a wholesale yeah. business in effect. Absolutely, obviously. wholesale, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was always quite funny. I always remember, because I, I, I used to get like maybe 10, 15 Tiffany jewelries every week and I was buying them for 15 quid and I was knocking them out for 45. Um, and football shorts, I was buying them for like a five and knocking them out for 20. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, it was, I, had, I had cash on the hip. Yeah. Like I was making sort of double my wages, three times, four times my wages some weeks from selling moody like, oh, yeah. football gear yeah, and it's yeah. like I wasn't even I hated football that's the thing yeah. right? but I loved business and yeah. I loved making money and I always had cash and this was a, like as a 17, 18 year old that's dangerous yeah because right? yeah, yeah. you don't know what to do with it and you're just like oh I'm rich and you think you've made it don't you yeah you and do yeah. Your, your, your ego takes over and you're like you start becoming a cocky little prick yeah. and uh, before you know it you're, you're walking around with yeah. 500 quid in your it's pocket it's like a mirror image I did exactly <laughs> the same I'm, and and it it, be, it brought out the hustler mentality. Yes, 100%. and I call it, like you say, the cash on hand, cash yeah. on the hip, it's opportunity cash. Yeah, yeah of always. course it is. And I've always had that mentality where you always need that pocket full. Yeah, um, And it's like, is, is that for sale? Yeah, all right. Everything's for sale. If I can make sale. a quid on it, it's for sale. Everything's for and sale. And still to this day, you know, we get offered all sorts of stuff. So, okay, car wash, good. Uh, you then start doing loads of moody gear to yeah. cheat on market. What next? Uh, I continued the moody, well not moody gear, but bought or sold anything. Yeah. Literally a hustler, like yeah. a market trader style. Yeah, yeah. Um, we used to we used to buy a hell of a lot. So I would in, we'll call it, it it's business, but it wasn't a Legit, legitimate yeah, limited yeah. company type. Business. Yeah, Del Boy business. And me and a, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, we did everything together. Mm. And we used to buy barbecue, <laughs> walkie walk barbecue. <laughs> and we used to buy fireworks. We did fireworks, fireworks every single year. We had shops, everything. Are you, and I, I never used to get shops, but I used to I used to fill vans. Yeah, yeah we all had a van. We eventually got, well, it was to say a shop, we were a cabin, yeah. but we were a shop front style. Do you know what I mean? And uh, we did that every year. And I just, I, w I, I, what I did is I got bored, got a job, got bored of the job, went back to hustling, mm. you know, st set up, another, I set up um, 
an actual car wash. Okay. Yeah, proper car wash, um, where you drive in and drive out, yeah. hands free. Um, we set up one of them, and um, that did really well for a while. Yeah. Really well. For, we sold that. Oh, awesome. Bored them. Bored them. Got bored. I get I get bored too yeah. easily, and I think right. Well, I've done that. I've made that money. Get on to the next. Get thing. on to the next. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you know it's, it is very similar to myself. Um, growing up, um, I wish I knew back then what I knew now. A million percent. Because if I, if and it's like you, if you knew now, knew then what you knew now, you would systemize that business oh, and God get yeah. it so it's working. So you just go there on a Friday, collect all the cash. Yeah. And then happy days, you pay your boys, you collect all the money. Happy days, you move on. Yeah. Um, I know, I know a guy in um, in Sheffield, and he's got multiple businesses, and they're all cash businesses. Mm. And all he does on Fridays, he runs around all of his businesses, all of his houses, all of his sort of deals. He's got, he's got several businesses and about thirty houses. Right. He runs around all the houses on Friday, collects his rent, and he runs around all the businesses and collects rents because he runs um, vape shops. Right. Okay, so yeah. a lot of it's yeah, cash yeah. and. Uh, it's that's what he does on Fridays. Monday, Monday, Thursday, he, he thinks and grows the businesses, buys new deals, whatever. Friday collects his money. Yeah. And he's always got, he's always got stacks, stacks, stacks. of money. Yeah. It's stacks. dangerous these days, it's isn't it? Dangerous, yeah. dangerous. All right, so you, you bought and sold a car wash. Or you started a car wash and sold it. You mentioned a little bit about, like, as a young guy, you were getting into a bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. Is that something you want to talk about? Or? So it's, it's, it touches on a point of what led him to, to where I am now. Great. So yeah, I, I was very close to jail a couple of times. Okay. Um, different reasons. I was, I had a little man syndrome. Right. And I was very angry little bugger. Right. Okay. Um, Fair enough. And it a short short fuse, and it got me into trouble. Right. It got me into trouble, and the last time it got me into trouble, probably about 10, 11 year ago now. And um, I was in and out of trouble. A lot, everything you could think of illegal, yeah. I was involved in at some point. Right, okay. And in about t it was ten years ago, my little boy's ten. So ten years ago, um, I'd been I got married to my wife. Oh, well, eleven a year ago actually. I should I shouldn't say that. I'll, f I'll forget the date. <laughs> edit, 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 edit that edit. bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's about eleven years ago we got married. Ten years, my little boy's ten now, and I had a little girl who's seven now, and my wife. Basically, funny. I had this conversation. I had this conversation with somebody in uh, in the business academy, and um, they said, "What what happened?" Mm. And, and I said, "My wife gave me an ultimatum." And I'm talking to my wife two weeks ago, and she went, "I don't remember that conversation. <laughs> it changed my life." <laughs> she has no idea. She has no <laughs> idea about it, and she never forgets anything. She's like, "I don't remember that," and she gave me an ultimatum: right. behave or disappear, yeah. get out of his lives, and. Um, I made that decision there and then that day, and I sold everything that I was involved in. Yeah. So you want to call it shares in the business that wasn't yeah. really a business type of thing, and literally left. And we were making thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds a week. Yeah. We were Marbella champagne, five thousand bottles, yeah. five thousand pound bottles. We did it. You're living. I lived that life, mm. and I stopped everything and went and got a job because I'm qualified bricklayer. Yeah. And I have been and since 2002 yeah so i did that as part of, i need to sort my life out let's do something um family member runs a building company got involved he taught me so on and so forth so the your your, your partner your wife um really she changed she changed your life but mm. she made you up and they say this don't they they say behind every every good good man is a as a, is a, is a, is a yeah. pillar of a woman pushing you along um now obviously that's not against anyone that's not with a man or a woman, yeah. it's, it's whatever, but it's just a saying. But my point being is, I, I believe that. I yeah. believe that very truly, that but behind every success, there's always, always somebody in the background. It's not necessarily in the public eye or in the, the people who know who they are, but they're the ones supporting you and pushing you. Yeah. So what she's done you, she's actually probably saved your life as well. A million percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not just, not just changed your life, she's saved your life. Yeah. Because if you stayed involved in that world, where would you be today? Well. You'd either probably be in prison, prison or, or, uh, or a lot I worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, the people we were around, you know, I was literally surrounded by the worst of the worst. Yeah, murderers. A friend of mine got murdered not so long ago. Yeah, you know, a lot of people in jail. Friends at my my, my age now are in jail for attempted murder. Yeah, and not long since get, got arrested. Mm -hmm. It's like. You're in that circle. You soon get drawn in. Well, it's the, it's like it's your environment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, massive. Um, if you hang around with five criminals, you will be the come the safe. Yeah. 
Okay. It, but if you hang around with five millionaires, you will become the same. Yeah. And it's environment is everything. And you're, you're in a bad environment. Your, your wife come along and said, sort yourself out or leave. Yeah. Pack your shit and leave or sort yourself out. Yeah. Um, and it was the, probably the best sentence you've ever heard. It was. Um, and it's, it's awesome. Um, it really is. And the fact that she's been there through and she's supported you all the way through. Because that, that can't be an easy transition. It wasn't. To go from a, a multiple years of essentially a life of crime and a life of... Hustling. Hustling and, and avoiding, like, I, I imagine, running from the police, whatever. Just a, a, a life that's not... It might seem, people might think, oh, that's an amazing life, but in the it's reality, not. it's not. It become very normal. I mean, we got raided with armed response and we had markers on his car. Wow. We literally got raided. We had um, uh, a factory. I won't go into what it was and, and what we did because um, people are still involved in, in that lifestyle and yeah. I don't want to tarnish them with any sort of brush. But we literally got raided with police with machine guns. Wow. And, and it was just... It's one of them days. Yeah, yeah. It became very normal. It's just one and it, yeah, and the transition was ridiculous. Oh. Like you say, we, I mean, we were making thousands and thousands of pounds. We lived a life. My wife said enough's enough, and I got a job, and I got a job for eight pound a day. Wow, that yeah. is a big shot. You, you can see why people get hooked in the life of crime because of the money. Yeah. Um, and to, to, to the reality is to to go out and have an honest day's work and an honest living, you're not going to make the sort of money that you will if you get the life of crime. But even in the life of crime, like you would, you could argue that the people that are running it are actually running very good, successful businesses. businesses. Oh, honestly, businesses. The businesses are just not legal. Yeah. Businesses. If they turned that mentality from wrong to right. Yeah, we've been multi-millionaire businessmen. Yeah, legitimate. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, okay. So let's not dwell on that. You've you've got out of that. What happened then? So you 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 went and got a job, earning eighty yeah. quid or whatever. <clears throat> How did you get from that to HBD? So I HBD's got a job. Very successful. Yeah, I got a job. Um, as a friend of mine who has a building firm. Um, I'm a half decent bricklayer. If anybody wants to know, I am actually really good. Half decent. He never bigs himself up. <laughs> He's an amazing bricklayer. And. Um, and I got a job for a friend of mine, and I was there for four months, and I just the, the mentality kicked in again. Yeah, back to the yeah. back to the car wash, like, like, washing cars for somebody else. Yeah. yeah, I can't I can't do this. I can't yeah. do this for my you know for somebody else for so long. And a friend of mine, a very 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 wealthy friend of mine, approached me and um, said, "I'm gonna build a house. Would you like to build it for me?" So I said, well, "I'll have a chat. Yeah, no problem." Yeah. And I mean, this turned into the the best thing you could ever have done. It was probably the worst period of my life in terms of stress, Yeah. but it, it put me up on a pedestal because of the house that it was. Right. So a typical three bed house, square footage is what? Three, four hundred square foot or something yeah. like that. This was a 14 and a half thousand square foot house. It's huge. My my old workshop was 14,000 yeah. square. No, 14,000? 14, 14,500 oh, square blimey, foot. Oh, blimey, no. My old workshop was like 7,000 square feet. So it's yeah. double the size of my yeah. old workshop. It's a mansion. Nine bedroom, swimming pool. It had everything you can possibly go wrong. Go Do you have any pictures of that? Yeah, I've got some, yeah. We'll get some pictures and we'll flash a picture up so you can see it. No, we won't, unfortunately. Oh! The man's very private. Okay, very, fine, very, fine. very private. Um, and I, I can show you personally. Yeah, yeah, no, um, I understand that. But an absolutely amazing house. Oh. Amazing guy. Um, very, very business shrewd. Yeah. I want it this way and that's how it is. Yeah. And it was a two year project turned into a nearly three and a half. Yeah. And it were lots of changes, lots of stress, lots of headache. But it just, what it did is it, I built a network of people. Yeah. And you know, the bricklayers, um, I set a business up with them. You know, the plasterers that I used, the, the people, everybody, I had, I had a team under me of 22 people. Yeah, that was, so that you, you, well, that's amazing. So how, how, what was the time period? So you got out of the life of crime, you went back to your job. How long was it before, when, when you left that life to when you were starting to do this house? Four months. See what I mean? Yeah. Do you, I say this all the time, because you've got that hustler mentality, when one door closes, another one always yeah. opens because you've got to. We had on the podcast months ago um, a, a guy called Matt from the the the, the um, oh, camper van, Matt. The camper van, yeah. camper van, yeah. And Matt always says, always be looking up, yeah. always look up because you never know what opportunities are coming your way. Yeah, it's true, is that? And it, it's very true. Yeah. And now you've got these this amazing build project going on. Do you remember how much that was worth to you, like roughly? It, so I took it on as a like a project management. So I got a very good wage. Okay. okay. And did it that way. And I, I saw it as a get out from the eighty pound a day. Yeah, it yeah. It was absolutely. a stepping stone. It's and, yeah, and it's a, and it's a, an immense stepping stone because 
it's one of them show and tells where yeah. you, it's, you go to meet a customer and go, hey, have you got any work that you did before? I can show me. Yeah, they yeah. go, all oh, right, yeah, you can do yeah, this. Can do and, um, and, it, and I still to this day talk about it and show people privately. And um, yeah, and it, and it were four months to start this job. It were, it, it had everything that you could ever imagine mm. in a build from uh, ground investigations, piling, everything. Awesome. Um, and I did that and two bricklayers that I took on and they were the best bricklayers I've ever worked with. Yeah. And the job were coming to an end and they were off to doing their own jobs. And I just thought, this is an opportunity here. Yeah. Um, because this job's coming to an end, what am I going to do after it? Yeah. And people were going, can you come and do our job? Because yeah. they'd seen it, you know, local area, can you come and price us a work up? So teamed up with these two bricklayers, create HPD. Right, okay. Um, and we set about doing the smaller extensions while I was still on this project. Yeah. But the guys, you know, were off on other jobs. So kind of like, let's team up, let's go do his own thing. I can do this, you can do that. And and it, that's where HPD was born. Mm -hmm. We did a couple of small jobs and then we got this van conversion that just, you know, it was first real job for HPD, 180 grand project. Wow, okay. And it kind of just took us off to the next stage. Yeah. I finished that job, jumped on with these guys and it's been a roller coaster ever since, to be fair. So, and um, when, when roughly when what year was 2018. that? 2018. So it's only like four years ago. Yeah. Um, and in four, so in four years, you've grown that business to multiple, multiple different departments. Yep. So you've got HPD Electrical. We've got plumbing, electrical, and builders. And you've got a, a network of a team of roughly how many people underneath you? So um, full time, we have uh, 11 people. Yeah. Uh, with a couple in the office. Awesome. Um, and then subcontractor wise, we have a mass network of subcontractors. As many as you that need, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and it's just crazy that you've, like, it, it's, it's I don't want to say it's like a rag to riches, but it is like a rag to riches, like. Yeah, to a point, yeah. I, I, yeah. When I, say, I know rags means like, I'm not from saying. From nothing to from, something. Yeah, I just yeah. mean from nothing to something, from like a, it, probably at the lowest of your low after you got out of the life of crime because you've, you've gone from making all this money to now literally not, and it's like, how do you deal with that mentally? And then you've got to deal with that because for your family, for your kids, and you've got to pick yourself up. And it, it shows a lot of will and it shows a lot of yeah. like um, ambition and drive that you've done that, yeah, yeah. but you've done it for a bigger picture. You've done it for the children and your wife. Yeah. That's why you've done it. And that's amazing. And now look at you now, like you've got this successful business, you're making an awful lot of money, yeah, yeah. you're employing people and you're doing amazing things and you're making nice and amazing buildings. Talk to me about refurbs because I know some people watching this will be, be people that are into property and they're looking to price up and, 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 and cost refurbs and I see it as one of the biggest difficulties most people have when it comes to doing the buy refurb which refinance strategy. Really? Yeah, most right. people really don't understand how to do it. Yeah. Like they don't understand. One thing they, they, can, they can get fined in property but then they get there and they have no clue on how to cost a refurb, they have no clue on even how to assess a property properly. Um, so a couple of minutes just talking about like, how, how would you advise, because you get a lot of property investors come to you and say, Kev, can yeah. you do this for me? Yeah. And what's, one, what would be the process um, for anyone you doing work for anybody? And secondly, what would be the, how would you want them to assess the property so you've got a, a clear picture yeah. of what needs doing? So I, I as um, a builder, always start from the top. Interesting. So, and and if it's a full, if you expect a full house refurb, yeah, um, it's literally the roof down for me. So take a, you know, take a set of steps. Yeah. Get up in the loft. Mm. First and foremost, the roof. It's a big expense. Yeah. And if it causes you so much trouble, there's no point doing a really nice house. Yeah. And then the tiles blow off and the roof leaks. And yeah, <laughs> that I've, yeah. I've seen that happen recently. Yeah. I saw that happen recently in a, in a refurb where um, they spent, oh God, I can't remember how much, it was 30, 40,000 pounds on the whole interior refurb. And then do you remember the wind, the storms yeah, recently? Yeah. Um, the, there was some issues in the roof and it leaked. And he they were away. They weren't even in the country. Oh. And then um, the whole one of the rooms upstairs all leaked inside, and it's just it's all now stained. So it's not damaged, but there's a lot of there's a lot of it's a lot of it? inconvenience. Yeah, staining. Yeah. Now they've got to resolve all of that. So they've got to basically do them. There's two rooms they've got to completely redo. And um, you know what it's like the water stains on walls. You, yeah, you know, it's a pain in the backside. Isn't it? Yeah, um, oh, right. okay. So start at the top. Start yeah. At the so I would, I would start at the top. Make sure the roof's felted. You know, there's no daylight coming through or the yeah. timber's solid. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you've got the ceilings for the bedrooms and things like that, make sure they're not bowing and, and yeah. causing major issues. And just work down, take a room by room. I always got taught, uh, my uncle uh, taught me my trade, uh, a guy called Mark, Malcolm, absolutely hero of a guy. And when we looked at big jobs, they were like, it's just, it's just loads of little jobs put together. Yeah. And, yeah. and I've always took that mentality from now till then. Yeah. Um, until now. And it's just one room at a time. Yeah. Bathroom, does that need doing? Yes, yeah. it does. You know, bathrooms are one of the biggest expenses. Yeah. Make sure you get it right, basically. Yeah, yeah. If there's well, tiles it's where the, the house wall. is sold, isn't it? Kitchen and bathrooms. Yeah, exactly. That's where you add the value. Mm. Biggest, you know, like finishing it with nice paint and nice skating boards and nice flooring. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, somebody's going to come in, it's not to their taste. Yeah, of course, yeah. So make sure the kitchen and bathroom are right. Yeah. And then you're on to a winner and everybody else can change the menial the menial jobs, bits, yeah. 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 Well, at the end of the day, what the, what's the bedroom? It's, it's four walls. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. no utilities in there, really. There's yeah. nothing really in there. Um, oh, okay. So start at the top, work your way down. Yeah. Now, with regards to costing things, so you obviously do very good quotes, and I've had some of your quotes, and they're very thorough. Yeah. So do you use some sort of cost calculator for that, or is it just your experience? It's just experience for me. Yeah. So I'll have a, I have a, a grid. I call it pricing grid. Yeah. So every job. It's different, you know, extensions, refurb, mm -hmm. you know, roof job, whatever it is, every job is different. Yeah. So I have a pricing structure and it's just a, a grid and it tells me, you know, pre site prelims, is it going to need a site toilet, is it going to need skips, is it yeah. going to need security fencing, do we have, you know, CDM coordination on it, and then do we need, you know, demolition. And mm -hmm. it breaks it down and I literally just take one room, so a job is made up of lots of little different jobs. Yeah. But then them jobs need breaking down even further. Right, fine. So I break them down into does it need skating bars, plastering, yeah. architecture, windowsills, windows, mm. and go through and break it down. And I do that with every single job. Yeah. And then it must take you a long time to do these quotes. Not so much a long time because I do so many and it's experience. Right. So I, I know if it needs a twelve hundred window, it's going to cost this much. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, so it's yeah. not like I ring up ten yeah, different people. Bring, and yeah, you just, you know, yeah. I have a decent team. Yeah. We stick to sort of price. Really and go from there. Oh, okay, cool. So if you've got, because I imagine you get a lot of property people coming to you, investors, yeah. um, some experience, but I imagine you get a few like newbies coming yeah. to you wanting advice actually, yeah. and asking for, asking for help, asking for questions. What would you advise them? Because one of the things I've always advised them is look, don't, don't 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 stress the builders out, right? Don't be calling the builders every five minutes saying, "Oh, I've got this. How much is it?" Because the reality is, they need to, you need to learn how to basically cost up a building, yeah. and you're not going to get it exactly, but you can get it ballpark. And then, like if you're doing deal sourcing, for instance, get it ballpark, add fifteen or twenty percent just to be safe, yeah. right? And then when you've got the deal secured, you can then instruct or uh, reach out to Kevin or whoever and just say look I'm buying this deal we complete on this date how quickly can you come around and have a have an assessment and be prepared to pay the builder for that stop I see this all the time people want they, they expect builders who are running successful businesses to come and look at properties with them for free because they might get the work it's rubbish pay your builder if you've got a builder and you're asking a builder to come out with you and look at a property offer to pay them a couple of hundred pounds and I'm sure if you do that, if, they, if you give them the job, they'll knock that off. But it, it shows willing from your part to their part that you're serious and they'll take you a lot more seriously. Um, do you get it? I had uh, last week, this week, sorry, this week, some, I don't even know who it was. Right. I got a WhatsApp message yeah. struggling to get some prices for build, from builders right. for properties I'm looking at. Any advice? And I'm like, well, what do you need from them? Well, I just need them to come and price a job up. Nobody's willing to do it. Of course they're not. Well, they're not because you you're not even bought the property. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. You're Why just a shopper. They? Yeah. So and I said exactly the same. Mm. Just offer to pay them, you know, two hundred and fifty quid or whatever it is that they want, yeah. depending on the area. Just offer it to pay them, and if they get the job, they'll give you it back. Exactly. That's exact same words as that, and just went thank you very much. Yeah, because they're not going to do it. Still don't know who it is. But they're not going to do it. That's no. the thing. They won't do it yeah. because they want it for free. Yeah. So they they want you like I, I get this all the time. Uh, looking to do property, any advice? It's like, yeah. how long have we got? I get it all the time, right? No, if you want advice, I've got a training program for that. If you want to use Kev for, to price up and give you advice on your refurbs, pay the guy. 
Uh, it's just ridiculous that yeah. everyone expects everything for free. Um, all right, so super successful business. Yeah, so we've um, HBD is trying to grow as a brand. Yeah. As not just a, just a, a group of builders. Yeah. Uh, business partner. So I had two business partners in the building initially. We got rid of one, a bit of a dead wood situation, so he's gone. Uh, me and James, um, who I started the company with, he's involved in all of HPD. Awesome. Absolutely brilliant guy. We have a brilliant team. We built one between ourselves. Yeah. And and we just kept looking, or I keep looking for opportunities. Yeah. And I was invited to do um, a price a job up, basically. Same sort of Is thing. Is this this bungalow? Yeah. Yeah, I want to speak about that. So I joined uh, a team of two other guys. And we, they formed a company, and I, I bought into this company, a company called Buy Investment Properties. Okay. And they already had a bungalow in mind. Yeah. Purchased it, and I was coming in the builder. Came in as a partner in, in the end up. And yeah, we, we we got this bungalow completely run down, horrible green, needed everything, <laughs> and we videoed it. Yeah. And we got in touch with you know influencers and, yeah. and and what have you, and they came and did some videos on us and we worked with investment okay it, it was fully invested <coughs> fully paid for by investors yeah and it was absolute brilliant project i remember seeing it, it um i've never been there but i saw it uh, on all the media social media yeah, yeah. and everything it looked amazing yeah uh, and it, it made the new lo local papers and all sorts yeah, didn't yeah, it? yeah. um and it so it went a little bit viral on all the local news up and where, where was it it was in leeds it's in leeds yeah, okay it was in leeds, yeah. and do, do you remember what, what, what were the figures on it so the figures, roughly, I won't involve too much in the figures. Okay. Alex, who runs that side, invite us. I think it was purchased for around about 320 odd grand all yeah. in. We spent about 150 grand renovating it. Okay. And it was put on the market. So initially, it was value, you know, in, um, they was gonna put it up for sale for 600 grand. It went up for sale at 695. Wow. And we knew we were pushing the boat out a little bit. Yeah, we were probably. pushing it's still a bungalow at this point. It's a bungalow, yeah. <laughs> we kept it as a bungalow because well, yeah. nobody makes them anymore. Yeah. And you know, as soon as somebody buys, buys a bungalow, they put another story on. Yeah. It's like let's keep it a bungalow. There's no bungalows yeah. around. We made it a massive bungalow. It was like nearly twelve hundred square foot. Wow, that's crazy. And it was high spec. Yeah. And eventually it sold for. We dropped it to six four nine nine fifty, and it sold within a week. That's really good. And, um, and you made a chunk of money out of that. Yeah, yeah. We give investors over six figures. Yeah, return. that's crazy, man. That's absolutely crazy. Like, if you guys want to, you know, joint venture, you know where yeah, he's at. In touch. He's always got his eyes up. His always, eyes are always open. What's this? You, I know you've got another big deal going on at the minute. Is yeah, that something you want to so, talk about? So, um, HBD as a company, we are fully booked up building yeah. side till March next year. Um, working for developers yeah. and investors. Yeah. And um, we have num numerous barn conversions. But on the Vi side, yeah, we have a big deal going through. It's under offer, and we're kind of doing a delayed sale. Okay. It's on the east coast. Yeah. And it's a farm with loads of land, and Alex and, his, and a, us at Vi are all speaking to the relevant people. Yeah. And we're looking to put 40 holiday homes on it. Yeah, I remember you telling me. It's, it's, going, a, like, it's going to be like a pretty big... It's a DDV of, of well over 10 mil. It's, it's about... 14 million pound GDV. Yeah, and uh, it's just nuts. And if this comes off, you all stand to be very successful and very rich from yes. the also back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's absolutely work. crazy, man. Yeah. There's a lot of work involved, but we get there, don't that's, we? That's a once in a lifetime deal, isn't it? Would you say? I know you can do more and more and more, but if you only done that it's one a, deal, yeah, that's a, like, yeah. something to be proud of. Yeah, it puts you in yeah. good stead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it puts you in good stead. All right, if you were to give advice to any of my listeners regarding, you know, just. I'm not going to say property, and I'm not going to say refurbs. I'm going to say business and life. Okay, yeah. What would that be? L listen and learn. Yeah. Listen and learn. I, I've, I've only got to where I am by listening to other people. Yeah. Taking little bits and putting it into practice. Hundred percent. Yeah, and it's uh, and it works. It works. It does work, but it, it's it's like everything. It's nothing's easy. No. Like, if it were easy, everybody do it. Exactly. Exactly. On that bombshell. If it was easy, everyone would do it. It is true. It's very true. true. Um, Kev, um, we're going to put your contact information in there. Do you have our Instagram, social media that people can get in touch with you on? Yeah, so Instagram is uh, HBD Group Yorkshire and mine's Kevin Wood HBD. 
and anything else can put in the link below. Yeah, we'll do that. Ones. Yeah, that's great. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. It's, it's an honour to have you as part of my business academy and part of the training. And I know we're going to be doing lots of stuff in the future. We, we discussed some of that stuff yeah, yesterday yeah. and some exciting stuff coming. Um, this is Kevin. My name's Alistair Cunningham. Make sure you, you stay tuned for next week's show. Uh, like, share, follow. Make sure you're, you're sharing the heck out of this. Um, and if you want to, you know, make, find opportunities like this, if you want to get involved, if you want to join venture, reach out to Kev. Um, also, if you want to learn about business, get put on to business launch pad, the link is below. My name's Alistair Cunningham. This is Kevin Wood. Guys, peace out. Much love. See you next time.